pleasure it is to be with all of you. Uh, I am certainly um, delighted to be here. This is just uh, an incredible opportunity for me to uh, be with all of you and to be able to share uh, my passion and my love for Irish genealogy. Uh, I will apologize at the start here that if my passion comes through um, for Ireland genealogy a little bit too strongly, well, that's just me. Uh, you get you get the you get the whole picture. Uh, it is a delight to be here <clears throat> with the Allen County Public Library Genealogy Center. As Kurt said, he and I do go way back. Uh, we met a long, long time ago and have had a number of really good opportunities over the many years. But today, um, I have a lot of material to share with you. Now, one of the challenges I have when uh, I start sharing Irish internet sites is uh, I like to share part of the methodology of why the site's important. And so I'm going to touch a little bit on um, the specifics of why you would want that site and what it does for you. And it's probably going to raise more questions than it answers in some, in some respects, um, but just know that we've got all that ground to cover. And so uh, some of these will just be little teasers and probably areas where you will want to continue to go on then and find uh, a little more information uh, as you go. So uh, just, just know that uh, I'm going to mention some things, for example, in relation to church records and other things that give you tips on what you may want to do, but um, uh, you'll have to explore these websites and there's, there's a world of uh, data out there to explore. So one of the things we're really trying to do is not overwhelm you with data, but rather uh, figure, help you figure out where to start and how to have a controlled uh, approach to what you're doing. So when we start, we want to start with some of these portals. So the Family Search Wiki uh, is a portal, Irish Ancestors is a portal. Uh, we wanted to touch on family trees because there are numerous trees out there uh, these days and they're being created by people from all over the world and Ireland in particular has this enormous diaspora of people who could be working on lines that are related to you. So somebody in Australia could be, could be assembling a family tree where a branch of that family tree came to North America and suddenly you find uh, this whole new cousin relationship uh, from people around the globe. Uh, maps are very important in family history. Uh, there have been numerous presentations just on maps, and I, obviously I have one that's just on Irish maps, and Rick Sayer has one on Irish maps, uh, so we could spend just entire sessions on any one of these particular points. Uh, parish registers, oh my goodness, uh, I never, ever, ever thought I would live to see the day that we would have online what we currently have online now for parish registers. Um, Everybody's favorite record, census records, we have to touch on that. Um, obviously, many of you are aware of the history of Ireland and what that did to the census records, but it does give us an opportunity to uh, still use them in today's environment. And then the civil registers of uh, births, marriages, and deaths, uh, all of those things come into play now. And uh, DNA has significantly raised the importance of some of these later 19th and 20th century sources uh, because many of our ancestors came in the mid 19th century or uh, the 18th century. And so we have tended to discount some of these later uh, sources, but now with DNA, uh, you really need to dig in and learn those and to be able to identify descendants and go from there. So um, let's look at some of these web portals. Uh, you know that I work for Family Search. I am a huge fan of the Family Search Wiki because all of us know something. Uh, so I just want you to think Wikipedia for genealogy, and there is so much to explore. Uh, you, you can spend days just getting lost in the wiki. Um, you can search by topic. So for example, if you want to learn about Irish church records, you can search just Irish search records or Ir Ireland probate records. You may not know that you can also search a specific place in the wiki. So you can search, for example, for the civil parish of St. Peter's Drogheda in County Louth. You're used to doing that in the Family History Library catalog. Try doing the same thing in the Family Search Wiki because resources for that location are, are collated there and put together with live links to uh, other records. Um, when you bring up the Family uh, Search website, you will see uh, the uh, initial search uh, page, excuse me, the initial opening page. Uh, click on the search tab, click on Research Wiki. And that will take you to this page where you simply then type in a subject. So in this instance, I have typed in 
Ireland church records. And that takes me to this page that then opens up a world of resources uh, about Irish church records. So it can give you a description, uh, other religions, books, tutorials, all kinds of information there that is extremely important to you. Um, you can see that you can zero in just on one particular religious group uh, and follow the links uh, to those. Uh, and so in this instance, for example, if you want to learn about uh, Catholic baptisms in Ireland, you can, you can find information on those and be able to connect to those resources. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can type in a specific uh, place. So in this instance, again, if I type in the place, St. Peter's Civil Parish, County Louth, uh, you can see that it will take me to uh, church records there. Uh, and in this instance, for example, if I click on Church of Ireland, uh, it takes me to links where there are transcribed records of those that are online and available. So um, this, this as a portal to other records becomes then your uh, gateway to that. So here you see uh, that now you can search those records online. And even though this is a transcript, it's alphabetically arranged and uh, it actually goes for over a hundred years. Uh, there actually are earlier registers and later registers for that parish, but it's a good resource for that. Um, another great site, uh, Irish Ancestors at johngrenham.com, uh, particularly for his surname distribution index. If you don't know uh, where your people are from in Ireland, uh, you probably want to take a look at the surname distribution maps. Um, he also has an index to the towns and the townlands if you're trying to identify a place. So many times um, we were given a, a clue, for example, from one of our ancestors uh, or a family member, uh, but now you're faced with this multiplicity of spellings. How does it sound? How is it written? And then of course, many, 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 many places in Ireland all have the same name. So sorting that out uh, could be there. Um, for a fee, he can produce an ancestor report, but he does the Irish Ancestors Wizard uh, is not uh, for a fee there. It's a lot of fun. We'll show you how to use that in just a moment. Uh, he has a very entertaining blog. I love reading John's blog. And so you want to pay attention to some of those things. Uh, here, here, for example, on his home screen, if you just type in the surname that you're interested in in Ireland and click search, uh, it will bring back a distribution map. So here, for example, is where the surname Crozier is distributed throughout Ireland. You can see some very heavy populaces uh, of that. One of the things that is extremely important about surnames in Ireland is they are very stable. They stayed in specific areas for, for multiple, multiple generations. So even if your people left perhaps earlier, the fact that the Croziers are still settled in these areas uh, is very telling uh, for you as you try to do your research and push your lines back. Um, as I said, there are other features on John's site. Uh, you can use his places web browser. You can type in a place. Um, I believe that one is under the fee structure. Uh, but you can also use this fun little thing uh, that he has uh, as the wizard. Now, many of you are familiar that John Grenham has written a book on Irish uh, ancestors and that uh, he has numerous sources in there. What he's done is he's really made it such that the wizard, so that those sources will support his research wizard. So it starts with a query system and you just start now typing in what you know about your ancestor you'll go through a series of maybe a dozen of these little questionnaire type boxes, and then he will produce a report for you uh, that tells you um, and gives you some hints about what you might want to do. So in this instance, I happen to type in that this ancestor was a carpenter. So um, when I click on the occupational records now, he's giving me hints or clues as to where I might find further information about that specific occupation and may be able to find records of my ancestor in those records. So just a really great uh, lead to other sources. It is a fee-based uh, site uh, for some of the features, so just be aware. Uh, I like to always give people a heads up when that happens. Uh, family Search, the Family Tree is an online crowdsourced family tree. You have the ability to watch for additions or corrections, so you can actually say I'm watching this family, and when somebody makes a change to that one, you can come back and see what the changes are, see if they've added uh, information there. Uh, you can attach recorded evidence. So this is where I love to attach sources. 
Uh, I know people complain that, well, people get in there and they mess up my data. What we have found is the more sources that are attached to a specific family in the family tree, the fewer the um, damaging <coughs> Uh, changes are made to the record because the sources support the conclusions. Um, you can initiate discussions. So, for example, uh, my father's name was Joy, J-O-Y. In the upper country of Arizona, it was a Danish thing. There were numerous men named Joy. Joy Ashcroft, Joy Whiting, Joy Waite, Joy Rancher was one of them. Um, but his father's name was J, J-A-Y. And so people constantly go in and think they're helping by correcting this quote unquote typo. So they changed my father's name to Jay. So one day I just started a discussion and I, and I titled the discussion, Joy Not Jay. And then I described that I'm his son, his name really was Joy and please don't change it. And that my grandfather's name really was Jay and please don't change my father's name. <clears throat> Since I started that discussion, nobody's gone back in and <clears throat> changed that uh, and made that uh, quote unquote correction. Uh, you have the ability to add photos and stories for long-term preservation. You know, we still, uh, what will happen to your stuff? I mean, we have devastating floods, fires, all these other kinds of things, and oftentimes family memorabilia is lost. Um, things get, uh, through generations, just get separated from families. But if you lo load them here, uh, we're committed to the long-term preservation of those things, and you can do it. So you can navigate up and down the tree. Uh, you can have a lot of fun uh, collaborating with others and meeting new relatives, and uh, I just really like it. Switching gears a little bit, uh, Gen Januki stands for Genealogy in the UK and Ireland. Uh, the service was created to be a virtual reference library, and the website contains instructional material on all aspects of Irish family history, uh, with links to many of the best Irish genealogy websites. So again, we're still in this portal phase, just trying to get you to links that will connect you uh, where you want to go and use that. So uh, from their homepage, you can navigate uh, directly to Ireland, and you see all of the counties represented there. You also see the various record types for those sources. So you can click on a specific county, for example, and it will take you to um, the record sources for that county. So if your people are from Derry or London Derry, uh, you can then click on all of those record types and it will lead you to uh, further sources there. So just a great entry point uh, to be able to use that. Uh, here I've typed on uh, or clicked on the uh, link for genealogy. And when I do that, it opens up a page describing compiled genealogies and births and marriages and deaths and all kinds of things that may uh, uh, work toward what you need for that specific area. Uh, it references research guides and mailing lists and those kinds of things. So just a really great tool to connect you to the information that you're seeking. Um, the Ireland Gen Web project uh, is part of World Gen Web. Ireland Gen Web is particularly focused on promoting websites for all of the 32 counties in Ireland. Uh, and those websites feature genealogical indexes and research guides. And again, all of them are giving very useful links. Uh, just know that it's really difficult and challenging to keep all of those links uh, current. And so occasionally you will encounter a broken link. Um, here, as we click on the Ireland Gen Web uh, project, you will notice the counties come up by listed by province. So a province, there are four major provinces in Ireland, and these large provinces then have the counties under them. You'll notice here that there are a number of uh, people who oversee each county, but you'll also notice that some of the counties are up for adoption. And what that means is that there's nobody currently managing that. And so uh, you want to pay particular attention to that. Here's a place you may not have thought to go, and that is YouTube. Uh, YouTube hosts useful videos on many aspects of Irish family history. Uh, many of you are familiar that um, Family Search just hosted uh, Roots Tech Connect. Um, uh, we, we created over 2,000 videos. Uh, those are going up on YouTube and other things. And so there are a number of places that you can look for useful information. Uh, on YouTube, just try searching uh, on terms such as Irish genealogy. Uh, and that will lead you to a host of research guides and other things that may be there. So you can see uh, just a, a wealth of information there uh, and, and create your own learning experience, if you will, uh, just from a series of YouTube videos. We use YouTube for a lot of different things uh, these days, and um, 
boy, it's it's pretty hard to say that if if there's something you need that there isn't a isn't a YouTube video out there on it of some sort. Um, I want to talk specifically now about Irish archives, libraries, and record offices because these are extremely important and extremely valuable to us because these are where the records are held, and they are constantly um, producing guides and records and digitizing their collection and it's uh you know i'm in this field and it's still extremely challenging to just keep up with all of the changes and so i love opportunities like this to speak honestly uh, because it makes me go back and relook at things and learn things and catch up and sure enough every time i'm 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 surprised but i'm never surprised they've always done something since the last time i looked uh, the national archives of ireland of course just an anchor uh, facility for research in Ireland. The archives in conjunction with the Library of Archives Canada, for example, digitized and indexed the 1901 and the 1911 censuses of Ireland. So what you will see uh, in today's industry are a range of partnerships. Um, what it means uh, to us are a number of different things, specifically that there are numerous indexes sometimes to the same record. And so you want to search multiple sites for some of the same information. Uh, the archives partnered with Family Search and Find My Past to digitize, index, and publish many other records, including early census fragments, the tithe plotment books, which were an early tax record, uh, the calendars of wills and administration, the indexes, in other words, many of the wills and administrations were destroyed, but the calendars were saved. Uh, estate court files. Uh, these were from the estates that were being liquidated uh, after the famine. Uh, petty session records. Uh, many of our ancestors ended up in court for one thing or another. And so, you know, it, it literally could be a petty crime. It could be they lifted an apple off a stand as they walked by. Um, prison registers, some of them went to prison, some of them were deported. Uh, so all of those kinds of things are uh, available. And then one of the most important ones are the land valuation records, which basically give us uh, a substitute census and a very solid uh, land record, uh, which we're gonna look more at here in just a few moments. When you go to the National Archives website, um, they have uh, understood for a long time that family historians are one of their key um, uh, guests coming into the archive. And so you'll notice down here at the bottom where it says genealogy. Uh, if we scroll up on that a little bit, you can click on that and it will take you directly to the resources that are available there and how to begin uh, researching your family history. So uh, this website continues to evolve. Uh, they're just uh, fascinating things that we discover in these archives uh, each and every day, just mounds and mounds and mounds of data. So I know many of you are familiar with the destruction of the public record office that took place there in 1922. But even with the destruction of the record office, they have rebuilt that collection in many, many different ways, and they still have a wealth of information for us to explore. Um, one of my favorite stops when I'm in Ireland and in, and in Dublin is the National Library of Ireland. Uh, it's a wealth of resource for uh, genealogists. Uh, they have uh, Catholic parish registers. Those are the registers that were used to make the digital images. Uh, they have historical newspapers, they have the landed estate papers, they have the best collection of landed estate papers in for Ireland uh, as a whole. Uh, they have Irish history and genealogy publications, so many of these, think uh, Library of Congress in this country, many of these have been deposited in the National Library of Ireland uh, as the central uh, uh, reading room. Uh, the website has a detailed listing of Catholic parish registers uh, with the details noting the gaps. So this is going to be, if there were to be a test at the end of this session, uh, this would be one of the foot stompers. And the reason this is a foot stomper is some of you have already gone to a website like Find My Past, which we'll talk about here in a minute. You've done a search for your Catholic ancestors and you did not find them in the Catholic parish registers. The challenge is you don't know what you just searched. You know you just searched the database of all of the available Catholic uh, baptism records, for example, but you don't know which years they covered. And that's where this is extremely important because when we look at this, you're gonna get details about that. They have uh, a separate area 
that you want to pay attention to for family history research. The other thing that I want you to do uh, is to go to uh, their website and they have a free PDF download that is a guide to family history research. I'd recommend you go download that and consult their guide because there are a number of tips that you will get out of that. Um, you can also go, as I said, to their Catholic parish registers. So they have the films digitized and available on their site. Now these are available in multiple places, but here's the reason to go use their site. When you click on that and you go to a specific place, the thing that you will note here, for example, on that, on that microfilm that ends in 05, it's giving you the baptisms and the years that are covered. So you can see 1744 to 1757, but then you see there's a gap from 1757 to 1764. You see that there's a gap from 1771 to 1777. Uh, you see that there's a gap from 1778 to 1781. When you go search Find My Past and you don't find people, it could be that the person that you're looking for, the estimated birth year that you have, falls in the gap for that parish register. This is how you find that out. This is how you determine whether or not um, the parish registers for the years that you need are available for the parish that you're trying to find uh, and push your ancestry back. So very important. The guide that I just told you to download, uh, this is a little tip from that guide. Uh, indexes to Catholic parish registers are available on Find My Past. Those are free uh, in an arrangement with the National Library and Find My Past. Uh, they're also available on Ancestry, which is a subscription site, and Roots Ireland uh, as well. They have one of the largest collections of Irish newspapers uh, around, and so you can uh, search their newspaper collection. Yeah, it's just a fabulous resource to be able to look at their database uh, of uh, newspapers. They too provide a, his, a, a list of family history links, so you can also use their website as a portal uh, to other research. So use all of these tools in, the, in your toolkit now uh, and hopefully combined with the handout that I provided, uh, hopefully you have a whole toolkit, uh, new toolkit that you can just use uh, to look at different things. So don't uh, underestimate these links and where they go and the records that they will take you to. Let's shift gears for a minute now and look at maps, uh, maps for the whole of Ireland, of all of the countries in the world, Ireland is the best mapped country in the world, period. Uh, there are historical mapping series. Uh, one of those is for six inch to the miles uh, survey of the whole of Ireland. Nowhere else. Uh, th this is unparalleled uh, for the time period. Um, you have city maps, uh, you have online map viewers, which allow for overlays of historical and modern maps. So if you're trying to go stand on the land of your ancestors, you want to be able to put those two things together. Uh, this is the opening page to their website. Uh, you'll notice that there are a number of products, even though they are uh, currently closed, uh, their storefront is closed, you can still shop online there. Um, this is a search result, for example, for just uh, Cork, uh, whether it's Cork City, Cork County, but there are a whole series of maps uh, that are available to you for those. Uh, you can also look at the townland maps. The townland in Ireland as a locality is extremely important to separate people with the same name. I was once researching a family in Southern Ireland within a 15 mile radius. I had six men all with the same name. I thought I had the advantage because I knew who his wife was. He was married to Elizabeth Neal. Of the six men with that surname, a given name and surname. Three of them had married an Eliza or Elizabeth, Neil or O'Neill. The only way I could separate them out was by townland, knowing where they lived and in which townland within which parish uh, in that area within that 15 mile radius. So it becomes extremely important to kind of sort those out. Going up north now, uh, the Public Record Office of Northern Ireland created after the country split in 1922. Uh, the Public Record Office of Northern Ireland uh, has an official website. It is as genealogy friendly as they come. Uh, Northern Ireland paid a lot of attention to genealogists uh, starting in 
uh, the 1970s. Uh, they, they, they really, really catered to the genealogical audience. Uh, the website does have a few online indexes. Uh, it has nearly half a million men and women who signed the Ulster Co uh, Covenant in the 20th century, but it also has a database of freeholders uh, records with indexes and images that's free of charge on their site. Uh, they have the post-1858 will indexes with images. So when you go into their website, uh, certainly there is a world of material there. You'll see their e-catalog, but you'll also see their freeholders lists uh, listed there. And you can learn about those records. That's one of the things that I really like about these archives is that they um, not only host the record, but they try to teach you what the record is about so that you understand why you're looking at it. When you find somebody in a record or you don't find somebody in a record, you need to answer those two questions, right? When, when you are, do a search and you anticipate to find somebody there that you don't find, we need to understand why you didn't find them because that is as much of the story as when you do find them. Um, when you do that search and you search on the freeholders records, here I just typed in the surname Wilson, for example, and uh, did my result set and here comes back all of these entries for uh, Wilson's. Now you have their address, you have the townlands, uh, and you can click on that and you can actually go directly to the uh, record and you'll see that uh, his property there was uh, valued at 10 shillings uh, and you can see that that was his uh, annual fee. So you see a, a date, you see a, a point in time. So we know that Archibald Wilson was living in the townland of Valley Easton on the 12th of June, 1776. So in your timeline of events, or if you're trying to distinguish people of the same name, we now can say this person was in this place on this time at this date, and he may or may not be the same person as this person of the same name in this record um, in that timeline. So very important that we look at those kinds of clues. Uh, the General Register Office of Northern Ireland was for the registration of births, marriages, and deaths. Uh, think about this for a moment. Um, the General Registrar Office in Ireland uh, be opened uh, for births and deaths in 1864. Uh, the country divided in 1922. So now suddenly you wake up one day and you live in one of the six northern counties in Ireland and the copy of your birth certificate is now in another country. Um, so there were some real challenges that the archivists and the record keepers had to deal with uh, at that split. But um, in 2014, I'm pleased to say that they launched an online service with fee-based access to those civil registers. They have copies for the six northern counties of the registers going all the way back uh, to 1864. So regardless now, you don't have to overcome uh, that uh, obstacle. So digital images and indexes are available online. Uh, we keep waiting for the General Register Office in Ireland to follow suit. We're, we're hopeful, uh, obviously, that that will occur. But again, this is a service I never thought I'd live long enough to see uh, happen. These days, of course, all of the websites are completely covered with uh, COVID-19 uh, information. And so, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that it tells you whether or not uh, they're closed, that type of thing. On their homepage, you will see this section for family, home, and community. And that's where the family history related resources are linked. And so when you scroll down to the bottom there, you will see that and it will take you directly to uh, their uh, family history links. Here you'll see a link to go to uh, the, the uh, General Register Office for Northern Ireland online indexes. And when you do that, um, you'll get that information. But again, uh, due to technical issues, uh, so this is just like a, a day old, right? Due to technical issues, uh, GRONI uh, online is currently undergoing urgent maintenance. So here for a few days, I don't know how long it'll last, but apparently the service of <clears throat> the online service is briefly interrupted. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's the beauty of the internet is that you can immediately get information up and let people know when you've got a problem and then uh, restart your services when it goes. Uh, you can search their indexes for free. And so you can go online and do that search as well. Um, uh, you can search by five year ranges. Uh, when we do Irish family history, we always recommend 
that you go five years either side of the birth date. So just make sure that you uh, search a, a wide enough span. You've probably from census records seen the ages in uh, individuals and how wide the, the range can be. I mean, literally, sometimes I've seen a 20 year range over a, over a series of censuses where I know it was the same person in the census uh, every 10 years, but their birth rate was, their birth age was just all over the map. Uh, switching back to the Republic of Ireland, the General Register Office in Ireland uh, has digitized and indexed the civil registers um, with the records through 1922, but they don't yet offer, offer that online access, but uh, you can get uh, copies of those. Uh, the indexes are on Family Search, so there are 23 million plus entries in that free index on FamilySearch.org. So don't uh, don't forget to use that in the search field there, and then uh, use the information for public consultations for those. If you want to get a certificate of one of those, we're gonna talk about this website in a moment, but if you go to irishgenealogy.ie, it gives you very specific instructions on what to do if you want to get a copy of that certificate and what your options are to purchase it. Now, as I said, land is extremely important. Um, I don't know about you, but many of us would love to go stand on the very land that our ancestors walked and, and farmed and tilled or whatever. Uh, the shop that they kept perhaps, but the valuation office becomes your central point for that, even if your ancestors came in the 1700s. And the reason for that is we work both directions from that stake in the ground that we, that we put for those land and those valuation records. Uh, the following counties are digitized and available in their office if you're on site. So this list continues to grow. When I first started doing this session, uh, there were only four counties uh, listed in this list. But this, is, this list is current as of this week. Um, and so if you're on site, you can do that. Um, under their uh, archive and research um, tab on their site, you'll see the button for genealogy. And so again, they are in tune with the fact that one of their most used resources is for genealogy and family history research. You can see here uh, a description of what those records are, and then you can see the books that they actually hold, and these are the books and the maps that are being digitized. So the maps relate directly to the information listed in the books, gives you a map reference, and you can go exactly to that piece of land. Many of these boundaries over hundreds of years have not changed. The hedgerows are still in the same spot, these street shops and everything, the, the, those pieces of land are still um, the same. Now, the, the, the exception is, for example, when they come in and they clear a whole city block and they put a, a new mall in or something like that. But by and large, if, if it's just those same houses along that street, those pieces of property and how far back they go and that kind of thing are all still, still there. And so as they digitize these books and make them available, uh, this just gets more and more and more fun. So uh, they're doing these in com combination with other companies as well. So you want to make sure that you stay in tune with that. Switching to another archive now, uh, and that's the Registry of Deeds. Um, the purpose of the Registry of Deeds was, quote, for securing purchases, purchasers, preventing forgeries and fraudulent gifts and conveyances of lands, tenements and hereditaments, which have been frequently practiced in this kingdom, especially by Catholics, to the great prejudice prejudice of the Protestant interest thereof. Uh, pure and simple, uh, the Register of Deeds was established to give clean title uh, to the Protestants who had usurped the land from the Catholics. Um, it wasn't a mandatory registry, uh, but that was the genesis of it, and that's where it started. Uh, over the years, of course, um, land tenure, um, having, having um, clear title to those records became uh, very important. And so, uh, uh, in recent years, they shifted over to the land registry, and the land registry does the exact same thing uh, that we have in this uh, country, and that is um, granting you clean title to those records. Um, on their uh, website, you can see that you can uh, gain access to those records and send for copies. There's been a group that has been indexing uh, the Irish deeds uh, there. It continues to grow. You can see that they're up to over 400,000 entries now. It's going fairly slowly, uh, but it can be extremely useful. Uh, you can do a search by surname uh, in their uh, index, and you can see here, for example, uh, these are the rancher entries in the index. 
uh, it's extremely important because in, in the Ireland Registry of Deeds, you have a grantor to grantee index, so the seller to the buyer. We are used to, in our county courthouses, for example, also having a grantee index, um, buyer to the seller. Uh, they do not have that kind of index. They have what's called a county index or a townland index, which was the reverse. And the reason for that, the reason that worked for them was the piece of property that you were dealing with, you knew where the piece of property was. So when you went in, you would say, they would say, where's the property? And you would say, well, it's this townland in this county. Uh, and the people working there could go directly to it and they could see the uh, transfer of that deed. <clears throat> where we're coming in looking for ancestors and we don't know the place where the land was, that's where we desperately need the grantee to to the grantor index that doesn't exist. But this, the people indexing and creating this site are solving that problem because this is giving us both the grantor to the grantee and the grantee to the grantor. So uh, hopefully I didn't confuse you too much there. Uh, these are copies of the memorials. You can see that they're beautifully handwritten. These are the copy books. These are not the original deeds. So this, they would take the original deed and they would hand copy it into this book errors could be made in that transcription process. So there are times when you want to look at the actual deed. Let's skip back up north now. Again, Linden Hall Library has an <clears throat> absolutely fabulous collection of local history material for uh, Northern Ireland. Um, <clears throat> much of what they have collected over the years uh, also pertains to other parts of Ireland, but it's a fabulous, fabulous collection. One of the things that's extremely important there, um, unique to the Linen Hall, is the Blackwood pedigrees of handwritten family trees uh, and the Belfast Newsletter Birth, Marriage, and Death Index from 1737 to 1863. The Blackwood pedigrees uh, uh, comprise about 95 volumes of handwritten linear uh, pedigrees for uh, Northern Ireland families, so an extremely uh, important collection. The next question you're going to ask me is, has it been filmed or digitized? And I'm sadly going to have to answer no. Um, I did write an article about it uh, <clears throat> in the Irish periodical, the SEPS, and did give you a list of <clears throat> names by volume. Uh, so you can consult the article and see if there's a pedigree for the uh, family that you're interested in. Uh, <clears throat> another just a fascinating site, uh, Ireland Postcards. You can see here that you can click on a locality and get historical photos of some of your homelands and uh, the experiences that were there. I love old postcards; just uh, just fascinate me for hours. I can I can I can look at those for a long, long time. Another very important facility is the Representative Church Body Library, and it is important regardless of what religion your ancestors were in Ireland. And the reason for that was the Church of Ireland was the state church. And as the state church, um, all marriages and burials were supposed to take place within their confines. That doesn't mean they always did, but they were supposed to. And so uh, they were a depository for original uh, parish registers and importantly, the vestry minutes. The vestry minutes are the workings of the parish because they were basically the legal entity as the state church for overseeing the geographic area where your ancestors lived, regardless of their religion. Uh, they're placing digitized copies and transcripts online, although very slowly. Uh, there are listings available for the parish registers and the vestry minutes. I'm going to take you very quickly through that. Like I say, I could spend a whole session just on church records. Um, but for a list of their parish registers, you can download uh, this PDF uh, file and it will give you an up-to-date listing of uh, the parish registers. So the most current version they have online is October 2020. They give you a color code. Notice that gray box right there in the middle that says lost. Registers for this parish were in the Public Record Office of Ireland in 1922 and were destroyed in the destruction there. But the others give you hope, give you copies, tell you where you're, where you're looking. So you can see from the list of the registers available, um, where you might be able to find those and just use the key to be able to go back and forth to those records. They also have a detailed inventory for the uh, Church of Ireland registers, similar to what I showed you for the Catholic records uh, on the National Library uh, of Ireland uh, website. 
this would be its counterpart for the Church of Ireland. Um, they also have a few online registers and you can see those. Um, the other important thing obviously is the hand list of vestry minute books. So while some of the parish registers were destroyed, the vestry minutes that were in the same parish were not destroyed. And so very important when you look for that hand list and you do a comparison of it, uh, you can compare the parish register listing to the vestry minute books. This is a picture of a parish church. This is where they kept their records. You'll see that it has a lock and key um, and the parish clerk had a key, uh, the minister had a key, and this was where they kept all of those valuable records. Here's a quick comparison, for example, just County Carlow, where you can see copies of vestry minutes that exist for parishes where the um, parish registers do not exist, and you can see the years covered there. So a very important record uh, for doing Irish research. Government programs promoting family history, irishgenealogy.ie uh, publishes free name indexes to parish registers for hundreds of Church of Ireland and Catholic parishes. Uh, the Church of Ireland counties of Carlow, Dublin, and Kerry, and the Catholic parishes in counties Cork and Dublin. So this is a, this is a set in addition to what had been done previously. And there's one small Presbyterian church for County Dublin. When you go to their website, you can do a search on church records or civil records, uh, type in a name. Here, for example, I typed in Rencher, and sure enough, there are entries there to view the actual church reg register. There's a link there at the bottom of the entry. And when uh, I go to that link, it takes me directly to see that um, church entry in those registers. Uh, you can also search. Uh, you can also search a current list of available parishes. Um, again, divided by the different religions. Click on that, and it will take you to a list of, for example, the Church of Ireland parishes for the County of Dublin. Again, importantly, when you are looking at a list like this, and it's giving you an outside date range. This isn't identifying for you any gaps in those registers. So use the other tools I've taught you about today to identify gaps in those registers. Family search, I'm kind of partial to us. Um, we've got over eight, almost 8.5 billion searchable names now online. Each and every day we post 1 million to 1.6 million indexed records per day. So just significant Irish collections, the civil registration, the tithe appointment, which was an early tax record, the Irish landed estate court files. So go to our website, click on records in the search tab, and it will take you to our various collections. I usually like to access that through the browse all published collections. And then you can go down and you can look specifically for those collections that have been updated and the ones that are new uh, there. Ancestry.com has a very respectable uh, Irish collection. They have a number of major <coughs> uh, collections on their site as well. Um, so it just happens to be here uh, through tomorrow. They're offering uh, $40 off on a DNA kit to find out if uh, you have Irish ancestry runs in the family. So just uh, if you've been putting off uh, getting one and you want to do that, why? Um, here's an opportunity where they're on sale. When you go down to their uh, card catalog, it will take you to all of their records. Notice uh, what they do, and like a lot of companies do, uh, they've posted a bunch of new material online uh, in leading up to St. Patrick's Day. So not uncommon uh, for these companies to do that. You can see uh, what they've put there and what, and what their new databases are. So just fun, fun stuff. Now, just... Uh, you know, I have a family search hat, but I, I will just say publicly here, the best collection of Irish material online uh, in, uh, in this community is by Find My Past. And so they host over 100 Irish collections available by subscription. Those include dozens and dozens of census substitutes. Uh, the Griffith valuation or the valuation land uh, records are the most important. They have passenger lists going to and from Ireland. Uh, the family search indexes to Irish civil registration of births, marriages, and deaths. And then, of course, they partner with us. Now, the beauty of that is we all have different search engines. So even so, though the same data may be on family search and may be on find my past, our search engines work differently. And so spellings become important, how you search for that, 
uh, becomes important. So do the searches in both places. They host the Catholic parish registers in the indexes in an agreement with the National Library of Ireland. I like to go to their catalog, look at all record sets, type in Ireland, bring up under the location, under where instead of world, I like to do Ireland and look at those. Here you'll see the Catholic uh, parish baptisms, almost 7.4 million entries. Uh, my wife has a Mary Murphy line. She says, David, you know, you're the director of the library, you're the chief genealogical officer. Uh, Ireland is your specialty. Why can't you find uh, my Mary Murphy? Well, dear, when I click on Mary Murphy, I get 16,038 results. Oh, but wait, uh, there's more. Um, when searching Irish Catholic records, you want to search in, on the Latin version of the given name as well. So I want to go in and I want to search on Marie Murphy. And when I do that, I get another 15,937 results for a total of 31,975 Mary Murphys. So I'm still looking. Uh, so don't feel like you're the only one uh, still working on your Irish ancestry. I still have lots to do. When you click on those entries, it will take you directly to the record. You'll notice that this is a very early Catholic record, uh, 1702, uh, and just so there's a lot there. Uh, I want to point this out. My Heritage also has a respectable collection of Irish material, and they are giving you free access March 11th through the 18th, so we're right in the middle of that. Uh, go to www.myheritage.com slash irish-records. So just an opportunity there, and you can see uh, during that time period that you can see their free uh, databases there that they have made available now uh, online. So their major record collections, they have a, a tremendous death index that is late. Again, this is extremely important in trying to trace descendants and to try to deal with DNA cases. Uh, they have the Irish census records up online, as do others, uh, marriage record collections, the Griffith valuation, um, Republic of Ireland index to burials. Again, notice how late that is, 1900 to 2019. So extremely important. Genealogical and Historical Societies, the Ulster Historic Foundation was established, um, the Ulster Genealogical and Historic Guild. Uh, so they have contributed to the community in many, many ways. They support the Irish and Scots-Irish uh, uh, information. The website hosts dozens of genealogy databases containing over 2 million entries there. When you go to their site, uh, one of the things that you can do is there are databases that are pay-per-view. So you just pay for um, a certain uh, uh, small amount to look at that stuff, but they also have a number of sources that are free. And so you want to take advantage of both of those if you are doing work, particularly in Northern Ireland. The Presbyterian Historical Society, uh, when the society was formed in 1907, it was made up of three churches which held uh, the Presbyterian order in Ireland. So there was the Presbyterian Church in Ireland, there was the non-subscribing uh, Presbyterian Church of Ireland, and there was the Reformed Presbyterian Church of Ireland. Um, <clears throat> to search their database for information on over 600 congregations in the Presbyterian Church in Ireland, you must become a member, but it's a nominal fee. Um, they do have a number of online things, but one of the things is the history of all of their congregations uh, are online that comes from a publication that they published years ago. One of the things that is free, however, is their alternative name collection, which I would uh, point you to because there are times when you don't know, uh, you, you can't find the name of a congregation that you believe your people are from. So, for example, uh, Bally Halbert here, for example, is also known as Glass Tree. Uh, Ballyclug is also known as Bree. Uh, you can see the differences here, and they are very different. So Ardstraw Second Congregation, also known as Drum Lee. That can be extremely important to you in your research, identifying the correct congregation uh, for the Presbyterians. They have lists of ministers. These are extremely important to you because many of, in America, we were recruiting ministers to come to these uh, frontier areas. And so uh, oftentimes, if you can determine where the minister is from, it may be that he came with members of his congregation, a number of families, or in some instances, even entire congregations. So very important to pay attention to who the minister is. Uh, you can become a member of this society, for example, uh, that I said, it's a very minimal uh, amount there. But if that's, what you, if that's the focus of your research, then it may be worth your investment. There are a number of county websites with local records. I'm going to show you one, okay? These are all over library. There's a county library in every county in Ireland. Clare County is one of the best. 
they have a number of resources up on their line, uh, on their web page, and uh, links to all of those. So you can see all of these databases. Every one of these is a link to uh, more resources. So that is uh, just one example. So you can easily Google, uh, just uh, fill in the blank, your county, Cork County Library, uh, Dublin County Library, whatever it is, uh, you can go in and you can look at their websites. There are too numerous, too many websites for me to get to today, but others that I do want to point you to, the uh, IR Atlas Townland database, which is the online version of the 1850 Index to Towns and Townlands. Genealogical Publishing Company did publish it in book form. It's in many, many libraries. I know it's in Allen County, but uh, you can also get to that online. Uh, Irish Roots Magazine continues to publish some great articles on how to do Irish genealogy, Irish Lives Remembered Magazine, all of these things can give you heritage and background to your homeland. Um, there are other websites here where you can find early census substitutes and directories, cemetery transcriptions, so just a wealth of information. Uh, use the portals that we talked about at the beginning of this session. Um, like I say, the, the websites are just too numerous uh, to, to enumerate them all. Um, one thing that I would recommend is that you keep a research log of what websites you've searched, the date you searched them, and the, and the names you searched, the surname variants, because like I said, uh, all of our search engines are different. Uh, I also mentioned we're putting up a million to a million and a half records a day. They're not all Irish, but um, depending on when you searched it and looking at those last updated dates, you can see when we've added new content to the website. Um, you may want to keep a record of what databases are on each site. So I oftentimes will go in and take a screenshot of the databases that are there now so that I can see what's new as well and mark the date that I did that. Thank you.